Hello YouTube. Oh yes, I'm at it again. As you see, it is now dark. Um, it is 8.39 p.m. Monday, January 3rd, 2022. And man, has today been a crazy, hectic, busy, and all-around awesome sort of day. Um, so this kind of seems like an odd time for me to be leaving. Or is it? Um... Actually, not an odd time for me to be leaving if I was going to a bar, I suppose. But I'm not. Um, I am actually on my way to go shopping. I I need to find a couple of doohickeys. You know, you know what a doohickey is, right? I need a couple specific doohickeys. I'm sure these items have names. Uh, but I really don't know what they are. And just for the record, I'm pretty sure that I have both of these doohickeys. But I have absolutely no idea where they are. I expect they'll be fairly inexpensive and actually obtainable from a store this time of night. And um, the... Uh, the um, uh, yeah... I need them now, so I don't need to spend the next uh, couple of days looking for them and maybe finding them. I uh, I need them tonight. At least I want them tonight. I need them soon. Um, so the one doohickey, I'm pretty sure it's just called a a, a uh, grounded outlet adapter or an un, an ungrounded outlet adapter, um, and that would be the adapter that has two prongs on it, you know, for, for 110 volt American AC, uh, mains power, uh, in case anybody's watching me from Europe and is unaware that different countries have different standards for, uh, power outlets, looking for a, an American, uh, you basically got two standard kinds of power outlets. So there's more than two, but I'm oversimplifying here, but two primary types of power outlets in the United States. Grounded and ungrounded. Now, I'm pretty sure at this point, electrical code everywhere requires that all outlets in homes be grounded. However, um, if you have a, a building that was built before that code was in effect, um, you might have ungrounded outlets. Um, pretty sure the building I live in was built in 1953, well before grounded outlets became a requirement. And actually, ungrounded outlets were very common at that time. Uh, with the exception of four outlets, which obviously were put in at a later date, um, right next to my, uh, my washing machine, which is in the kitchen. Um... Other than those four outlets, uh, every other outlet, power outlet, in my apartment is ungrounded. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's a plug-in many items, um, including, even if, even including, uh, let's say I'm, I'm just wanting to use it on at this point, I'm just trying to get some power outlet strips uh, plugged in so I can have some outlets that aren't buried behind furniture and shelving and whatnot. Uh, I'm sure you've, well, I don't know what you've heard, but I, I don't know who's listened to what vlog. I don't know if anybody listens to these stupid vlogs. But uh, anyway, I had, uh, I, one of the things I've been kind of struggling with lately is that my, uh, I don't have, and haven't for quite some time, a way to charge my phones, and at this point I'm regularly rolling with three of them, uh, that I do all this vlogging with and like everything else, um, um, I don't have a way to charge them in my bedroom. And that has been an inconvenience, to say the least, as I generally spend my time when I'm at home, in my bed, in my bedroom. And, um, yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's like, well, just just plug it in. Uh, all the there's just so much stuff in in my bedroom, and uh, 
in all the outlets that I have, literally every single outlet I have is buried behind furniture. Even if I didn't have all the clutter in front of the furniture, none of those outlets are on exposed wall at all. Nada. Zip. Um, and I completely forgotten that they also have the issue of not being grounded. Uh, anyway, the, uh, power outlet, uh, I, I managed to, uh, well, let me back this up and I'll get back to do hickeys later. Um, the, uh, so uh, when when we last were following Dan in these stupid ass vlogs, um, you know, I, I tell you on days like this, if I, if I had the tech to to do like a low budget Ed TV, I probably would. I don't know. It just uh, it makes me feel less alone, I guess. And and it's kind of interesting having a record of what all has happened, which is the main reason I think I'm still doing this. Anyway. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, when I left, last left, uh, I had just come back from, uh, from Circle K at 32nd Street in Van Buren. And my phone had somehow magically, I mean, it, it, it's, it's things bumping it in the pocket, but it sure seemed magical. Uh, as I was at Circle K, suddenly it started playing, uh, Runaway by... Kanye West, which is just an absolute favorite song of mine, and just feeling the vibe, and it just kept playing great music. Uh, and I was on my way back to uh, uh, the office at U Store. Ms. Bev had offered me a ride home, which saves me a load of time. And my agenda for the evening was to get home and get some more juice on my phones because they were getting very low. And uh, then uh, as soon as I heard back from Bobby, head over to his place to work on my nine bot scooter and try and see if we can figure out where the short is in it that made it go from being an absolute blast to ride for three days to completely dead. Um, I'm reasonably confident that it's just a loose wire, but I'm also reasonably comp uh, confident that that loose wire is way down deep inside the, uh, the stem. Um, probably between the motor regulator and the battery. And um, I don't exactly have the tools to get that apart. I'm kind of crossing my fingers that Bobby does. Um, the last time I did it, I'd use some... Uh, long uh some long needle nose pliers there's a special tool that's used for there's a when, when you open up a nine bot scooter there's a special uh sort of seal or cap whatever you want to call it that holds the uh you know wants to take the handlebars off and all that assembly pull it apart there's a underneath it there's a special sort of uh, clip clip, cap, whatever you want to call it, that, that's held in place by grooves, I think, in the stem. And uh, there's a special removal tool for, for taking that out, but it can be done with needle nose pliers. It's just not as easy. Uh, and then underneath that is uh, the motor regulator, and then underneath it, which I have swapped out on that unit. It's a pretty much a brand new uh, OEM motor regulator in it. It's only been used those three days. Uh, and then uh, underneath that is the batteries. It's still got the original batteries from it, its previous life as a lift rental scooter. Uh, anyway, the... Uh, um, I guess I'm thinking this would be easy. You know I'm getting sidetracked because that has nothing to do with my doohickeys. But uh, the doohickeys I'm on a quest for. Um, so the... Uh, uh, anyway, that was the plan. And about the like after I stopped, I stopped filming as soon as I got back to my storage unit. And at that point, I, I was trying to upload some video and and I, you know realized that yeah okay music was coming from Amazon and I've got a pair of old school uh, like I want to say late '80s early '90s probably late '80s um, Sony 
I'm not sure if they're branded as Walkman, but they're definitely Sony um, powered speakers. Little tiny things, nothing spectacular, but they sound great. They work great, and they're in phenomenally good shape for their age. And uh, you know, and any any headphone jack, you know, eighth inch headphone jack, plug right into it and give me music. So I was able to the first Obama phone. In fact, both my Obama phones have analog headphone jacks. So I was enjoying that. Anyway, love to continue with the story, but I'm at Target, and I'm uh, hoping Target has the doohickeys I'm looking for.